I've been receiving a couple of the same questions lately. Firstly, how do I hear what I want to do and create around a sample? And secondly, do I ever use a sample more than once? Those two questions have given me a great idea for today's video. So let's jump into it. What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Inspired By. My name's Will and I make an assortment of music under the moniker Hush Child. I've previously made a video on all the different ways that you can flip a sample or chop it up and manipulate it. But today I want to show you five techniques in ways that you can accompany a sample. So I would strongly advise checking out that other video after this one. Check out the sample that my friend M Brooklyn sent through to me. So example number one, this is a really great way to go about hearing your samples differently. And a lot of these techniques are gonna be about just that, ways that you can present your sample to yourself to hear it in a different light. You may have already seen this on my Instagram yesterday. The way that I went about chopping up this wonderful sample from M Brooklyn was to throw it into the machine here. I just import the samples into the machine and then slice it up by the transient size. And I don't edit the tempo, so I don't try to limit myself down to that particular BPM of 67.60 that I have in Ableton. I try to chop it up as natural sounding as possible. And then as you can see here, I've re-imported that track into Ableton. so much faster than the original, right? After that, I have all of my chops in this group. And the reason that I import them into Ableton is so that I can add EQs, saturators, any kind of buses, glue compressors, sends, all of that kind of thing that I find much easier to work with inside Ableton. I don't like to stay in this box for too long. And then after that, I've just kept some 808s low in the mix just to give it an extra little punch. everything together for this first example. Number one, I don't think we're gonna win any awards just yet, but we should have some food for thought in how we might use these techniques in our own music. Let's jump into number two. I think this next example would be very at home with fans of the SP404, especially with the release of the Mark II. But if you're like me and you can't afford the SP404, don't worry, I've got you covered. I've created this low fire effects rack and it emulates some of the effects and parameters of the SP. You can catch the video on how I made this at the episode up in the top right corner of the screen. And you can download the low fire effects rack if you're feeling a little bit lazy exclusively from my Patreon. So of course, if something's called the low fire, we're talking about the SP404, this has gotta be on a little bit of a low fire vibe, right? So my sample starts like this. Little bit of chimes. Nothing but lo-fi vibes here. Just repeating the sample here. So how am I accompanying the sample this time round? Well, of course I am using that lo-fi effects rack to introduce a little bit of noise and to automate some of these parameters, some of the beat repeats, turning on isolation and the filter throughout. And that means that the whole track, all of the elements are gonna stutter, be filtered, be bit crushed at the same time. So aside from that master effects, we have the drums, just a very simple lo-fi loop today. 
I was listening to the sample and I figured, you know what, spooky season is upon us. If you haven't seen my previous Halloween episode from last week, I would strongly recommend you check it out. It's a lot of fun. And I figured the theremin would work with this sample. So I tried to keep it in the same key. Couple of slip notes here. Gives it that kind of 1950s detuned effect, works as a nice top line melody. I've kept the bass really simplistic here, just using some of those same notes as a root note and then pitching. You know, we started with the B here and we've got the octave above before we drop down to the A note here. Very low fire, very understated, no, you know, huge subs here or anything like that. And then as I mentioned in the introduction, just some chimes with a little bit of noise here. And you can see that they're reversed at the end. So this makes a nice perfect loop as well. have a perfect loop because that means that we can mess around with this low fire effects rack or the sp404 to no end let's jump into example number three so this might be my most complex example and that's because as i said in the beginning it's all about presenting that original sample to yourself a little bit differently so what have i done this time round? well we've still got that main introduction But to help me hear it a little bit different, I've set it to beats, forward envelope, and brought that transient marker right down. See how different that sounds? So we've got the sample here, like I said, set to beats, transient, the forward envelope marker, and then we're set to about 25, so it makes it very short and staccato. I've put the octave above on the track below. And then I've tried to replicate some of those notes that I've heard with this serum instrument here. And the same again. I wanted to have more of a top line melody, especially something more woodwindy. So we've got this pan pipe flute instrument that sits at the bottom here. This is all super inspired by Mr. Bill. So the production that comes after that is this, of course, lovely Mr. Bill loop that I've chopped up, reversed, made a little bit more clicky and staccato in places as well. And on this track below, I have these textures that I've just put onto three other tracks that are all panned ever so slightly different. And some of them have reverb and EQs on them and others are just left dry. And that will generate some new interest around that drum beat, some ear candy. This example takes a little bit of time because you're constantly listening to tiny details of the track, but when you put everything together, it really is quite rewarding. I've coupled everything with just a really simple bass that's just playing the root notes and just this tambourine for a bar at the end of the loop. Let's listen to everything all together once more. Methods that we're looking at today are not only a great way to practice production methods, but it's a wonderful way to pigeonhole your best work. And once you've completed your best work, I would strongly recommend releasing your music with DistroKid. I use DistroKid myself and so do my collaborators. And in my opinion, there's no easier way to split that revenue than DistroKid splits. It's a fantastic way to make sure that your collaborators and professionals get paid upfront and evenly every month. It's just a click of a button and you pop in their email address. If they're not already using DistroKid, then you can invite them to the platform and they'll get 50% off. And if you want to get 7% off your first year, then just use the link 
in the description below. We've got two more examples to look at, so let's jump into it. Let's move into number four, because if you're even on social media a little bit, you'll notice that there's a bit of a trend happening with that drill sound. So I figured I'd throw that into the pot as well. So I've increased my tempo to 140, and this is what our original sample sounds like. So we've got a little bit of automation with the EQ here, just allowing it to come out of that high pass telephone EQ kind of space. And just bring in some of that bass heaviness in, anticipating the drop to this song. With this sample, I've made sure to keep it very drill. And so the characteristics in that are gonna be a lot of reverse notes. Right, so a lot of painstaking chopping slicing reversing but then after that the elements are pretty simple we've got a basic drill drum loop here crash there with some pitched hi-hats that i've just pitched down with the frequency shifter the bass normally just playing on the downbeat or the beat before the downbeat Every now and then we get some pitch shifted basses. You want to set your bass to glide so that every now and then you can do some notes that overlap a legato note, normally an octave above, and they'll sound like this. And then finally, I've got these vocal chops, which I think I got from a garage pack. Just made sure to pitch those right up, keep them very short and sweet. And they're just going to accompany our main sample, almost as a percussion loop or a melody would. That's a fun one. Let's jump into our number five position. So I figured we've got some lovely piano. Why don't we try and draw out the tension by just limiting that piano sample that we have? We end up with something like this. So what do we have going on here? Well, of course, I'm just using two chords from the piano. And I'm using these four notes as almost a drum fill into each change of song, or in this case, some empty space in the song. And that's gonna be the staple bit of release that everybody gets in the track when they hear this. Those are the memorable parts of your tracks. And everything underneath this is very simple, just some kind of Boots and Cats standard loops. Using that lovely Oliver kind of open hat ride. Got a little garage snare here for the offbeat. And some Oliver tambourines. And then just some strings playing some legato notes to again, raise the tension and excitement of this track. Our bass is just in keeping with the key of the original piano. At the end, I'm just increasing the high pass filter on the EQ to eliminate some of the bass and then ramping up the automation for the delay send over here as well. So again, we can draw out tension for what might be a drop later on. So hopefully by this point in the video, your juices are flowing. You've got some ideas of how you're gonna maybe choose a sample from Splice, YouTube, your friends, wherever you get them from. And you've got a few different ways to how you can approach listening to your sample a little bit differently and then accompanying music around it. As always, if you learned something new in this video, do give it a like, comment below what you want to see in future videos. Subscribe if you haven't already and hit that bell icon because it greatly helps out the growth of this channel.
Thank <laughs> you.